15 people who've signed up to host home groups. My goal is 20, and we've got one more week before these small groups start. So let's just keep praying about that. We are in the season of prayer and fasting during this week, and I hope you've had the opportunity to do some time of fasting and prayer for our small groups. I'm really excited about this campaign. I think it's going to be fantastic. But let's begin, as we do all things, uh, with God's blessing and God's covering on us. So let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for these opportunities gathered together in your holy name. We thank you for this small group that's gathering to talk about small groups, for all those who will be watching us online in the days to come as well, so they might get their training and uh, learn about how to lead a small group. I'm praying that you bless all of our leaders, that they might be prepared to face the challenges. That, and I just believe it's going to be fun. This is going to be a great time for everybody. They're going to grow in their relationship with you. They're going to grow in their relationship with uh, their brothers and sisters, and just looking forward to this opportunity. So help us to have a great time during the season of Lent to really focus our attention on developing and growing this relationship with your, your church and with Christ our Lord. We just thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So again, I hope those who are uh, streaming online have had the opportunity to download and print some of your pages, whether you get it by PDF format on the files page on the Revolution site, or again, it's directly connected to the advertisement for today, uh, where I announced that today is the day. You'll hopefully see that. I have an announcement that says that today, uh, February, what is it, the 5th or the 6th? February 6th is the day for small groups at 10 a.m. You'll notice there's an attachment to that in JPEG file, so you can print that out if you would like and follow along. Initially, I was just going to give a, um, an outline of some sort like I often do for sermons, but then I realized there's a lot of important information. I want to make sure that everybody gets all the information that you need. So I'm just giving you my notes, directly what we're going to look at today. And uh, if you have any questions, something doesn't make sense, we have the opportunity in this small group to be able to ask whatever those questions are. But let me start by just saying thank you again for your willingness to participate in helping us in this campaign of how we really do need each other, again, our 40-day campaign in small groups. My primary goal for every single one of you leaders is that this is going to help you grow in your relationship with God and with, with other people. That is the most important thing that I think I want you to get from this. Now, there's a cynicism oftentimes that people say, oh, you're just trying to grow the church. No, I'm trying to grow the kingdom of God. I'm trying to grow your relationship with God. And I will confess, there is a secondary goal which, if people that we connect in our small groups do not have a relationship with Christ, and through the small group, uh, they are really hungry and desiring for more, and you feel it's appropriate to connect them here at Holy Trinity, we would certainly be very happy to shepherd them, and certainly would welcome that. So uh, that's a secondary goal. Uh, if people are in need to be connected to some place, we are more than happy to figure out a way to do that. Now, we have... Uh, I know we have some from South Moreland County that are going to be watching, some from Greensburg and so forth uh, that are participating. I know it makes it tough location-wise for you to connect, but uh, uh, physically with us here, but we are trying to make it possible that we can stay connected with you all in some way. So again, welcome and thank you for your willingness. Now, uh, again, I already made the advertisement. It's on your page today about Small Group Central. For those, again, it's HolyTrinityEastPGH.com. Everything that you will need will be on that site. Now, if you go there right now, you're not going to have a whole lot of information about small groups. That's going to all start being populated with the small group information in this next week. You will be able, within the next week, to go and get everything you need on that website. You're going to be able to get the sermons, links to sermons on our YouTube page. You're going to get links to the video presentations that I'm going to be doing for every single small group. You will get the Bible study materials that you can download for your group. You also have worship materials that you'll be able to use. All this is going to be have links on that website and that will again be populated this week. It's not there now, but that's the stuff that will be up there by the end of this week. So just so we're clear with this, the small groups do not start this week. This is your last week to work on recruiting people. It starts a week from tomorrow. Tomorrow is the very first day, the kickoff Sunday for the sermon series, and then the small groups start that week. So a little bit about the structure. So let's look at the structure. Uh, the small group campaign depends upon people participating in three different things if they want to get the most benefit out of this. 
However, we also realize that not everybody's going to participate in all three of these things. As small group leaders, we are asking you to participate in all three of the emphases during this campaign. The first one is the Sunday worship and Sunday sermon time, because the Sunday sermon time actually kicks off the theme for that week. So I will be preaching a lesson that deals with the Bible study that you're going to be dealing with that week. As small group leaders, that's going to help you better prepare. Now again, I understand, we have people in Scottsdale, we have people in Greensburg, it is not physically possible for them to be here on Sunday worship. We know we also have some people out of state that have been participating or, or hope to participate. That's okay. We make it possible for you to see those sermons. We will make sure that there's a link to the, the sermons, uh, again, on, on, on our small group central at the uh, Holy Trinity East PGH. Com. You have a link to every single sermon. It will be on our YouTube page. So you can watch that in preparation for your small group time. I know that we have one of our small groups, in fact, the one that's going to take place in Scottsdale, that they will actually be participating in our Sunday worship at 1130. So they will be streaming the service at the same time. They've got a group of about six to eight people right now that are signed up that want to come and worship. They will actually participate in that service. We're going to make it possible to interact with them in some way. And then they're also going to do a small group after that. So I, I admire those folks, and I think it's a fantastic thing. It's just going to, going to kind of be like a satellite site of our church here. And so any way we can be a support to you, we will do that. So again, starts with Sunday sermon. And then after the Sunday sermon, at some point during the week, you need to, or every day, you need to do a daily devotional. So you will all have a booklet that you can either take with you, not today, it's not done yet, but by next week we'll have the book published, you can take a physical copy with you, or again, you can get it from Small Group Central at HolyTrinityEastPGH.com, where you can actually download the small group, or the uh, daily devotional booklet. It's important that you do that. You will be reading through the book of 1 John over that five to six week period of time. And it's going to be a guide to help you go through that and also ask questions to get you thinking about the, uh, the book of 1 John. And that's something I hope that everybody participates in. And I want you as small group leaders to encourage everybody in your small group to do a daily devotional. And then, of course, the, the, the gem of this whole thing is the small group itself, of which you folks have volunteered to be leaders. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the structure of that. But this is really important because there's a lot of people, we're going to go into some research in just a moment, there's a lot of people who will never, ever, ever step foot into a church building because they're intimidated by it, because they're cynical about congregations, but you are the selling point for the small groups. You are the reason why they're going to come, because they trust you. And so that's what we're selling. We're selling, well, I, we're giving away Jesus, but we're selling you, if that makes some sense. Okay, you are the reason why people want to come because they like you. And then through that, you're going to use that as an opportunity, certainly, to, to gift to them the love of Christ. And that's what we hope to do. I saw a few cringes here. Does that mean I'm being a little bit too. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's not a way to say that. Anyway, I know. Number four under structure, it says number five, but it is number four. There is going to be a follow up. Hopefully, we'll find at the end of this, between our 15 to 20 small groups, one person in each of these groups at least that really is still hungry to grow their faith deeper than what we were able to take them during that five to six week period of time. We will provide baptismal training for them if they've not been baptized. That's really up to you because you're the leader of a small group. We will provide you the opportunity to... to to initiate that conversation about bring them to, to baptism and so forth. And then also, if they are baptized, but they just want to renew that covenant with God, we will also be providing a 12-week discipleship class. And I'm going to give you folks as small group leaders more information on that later, uh, but we will be doing that a couple, about a month after the small groups are done, we will be starting discipleship training. And it will be a 12-week series. We'll be offering that opportunity twice here at this church, it will be also streaming on live. We will also put those on the YouTube channel. So you can follow that in one of several different manners. Um, and we really want to encourage that. But I am encouraging you, if you have somebody in your small group that really is hungry for more, you're going to be their pastor. It is going to be your job to shepherd them to there. Now, 
You may not have all the information that you need to teach them. That's my job. But you need to shepherd them. If they want to come and learn more at the discipleship training class, you need to bring them. You need to sit with them. You need to be the one that brings them here and uh, helps mentor them. Because I can't do that for everybody. I can't be everybody's mentor, but you can be. Don't panic about it. We'll give you all the resources you need for that as well. All right, so let's take a look at the date, the dates and the time frame so you can kind of see how this is going to work. This is under our, our schedule includes that headline. Again, we've been in the week of fasting and prayer this week. It ends uh, tonight at midnight. And then uh, we do home group training today, so that's already happening right now. February 7th, that's tomorrow. We have it listed as kickoff Sunday. It's just going to be an introductory lesson for people who are, from, who are already committed to the process here at Holy Trinity. Uh, and it, it, it's not necessary that people who are entering into small groups get the lesson tomorrow. I'm just going to be talking a little bit tomorrow during our sermon time about trying to go alone in your walk in faith. And I'm going to try to convince the members of the church, this is really for the members of the church and people committed here, about why it's important that we commit to small groups and commit to each other through small groups. Tomorrow is also Transfiguration Sunday, and so we're tying it into the theme of Jesus going up on the mountaintop, and you notice that Jesus did not go alone. He took three with him, his most trusted inner circle of disciples. And so that's really going to serve as the kickoff for our congregation. And then that gives you one more week between the 7th and 14th to continue recruiting people for your group. On the 14th, notice that the sermon title for that week is A Place to Meet. That is really the very first sermon that people participating in small groups will need to see. Even though it says it's week two, it's really kind of week one for people in the small groups who have not been connected to the church. Does that make some sense? Okay. And then again, you just notice 14, 21st, 28th, those are the titles of each of the sermons. The sixth, what does it mean to love? Uh, March 13th, week 6, we really do need each other. And then finally, uh, what have we learned? Week 7. That week 7 is a special holy day in the church. Anybody know what that day is? That's called? I know you're not seeing the calendar, so you probably don't know. That is Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday. Notice that we will have a combined worship service on that day at 10 a.m., that's going to be upstairs in our traditional chapel. We are really hoping that everybody comes and at least is able, if they can't make it on any other day, that you make the trip on that day. We will have our mission ministry festival that day of all the things that we're trying to accomplish. Now, we have one person from Greensburg here. My gut reaction is, is that, you know, I'm hoping that you're able to come on that day and present some things that you're doing in Greensburg. Because, you know, or at least think about that in terms of, I know you have a real passion for like the food shelf that's out there and for some of the other things that you've been connected with. Maybe we can come, come up with a ministry or mission that your group in Greensburg does. And maybe it's a support of the uh, food shelf or support of the women's shelter or something like that. And then you bring some information about that here. We obviously won't be able to physically participate in your work out there, but we can financially help in some ways. So you would bring some information about what your small group is doing. So all the small groups are going to get together, bring the ministries that they're doing. The church is going to talk about the ministries that we're doing. It's going to be a lot of fun. There'll be a luncheon and dinner at that place, at this place after the worship service, and it's going to be a great time. Uh, then, of course, we have Holy Week. During Holy Week, <coughs> you do not have a small group. Your small group are, is done at that point in terms of actually gathering together for an hour, 15 minutes for your Bible study in your home. But we're asking that small groups still continue during Holy Week, gathering together and coming out to the church during Holy Week for either Monday, Thursday service, Good Friday service, or this is what I really want to encourage for a Good Friday prayer stations. Our building will be open all day from like 7 a.m. until midnight on Good Friday. There's no excuse. Everybody will be able to make it. At some point, we will have this whole fellowship hall set up as a prayer uh, station with, with prayer stations. And uh, I would encourage you to have that be your final small group, that you as a small group bring your group down here. You spend an hour together 
through the or, or however long it takes. It can take a half an hour, it can take an hour. You come down and you, uh, you do the prayer stations together. And I think it would be a powerful way to end your journey together. <coughs> um, I'm also asking you to consider on that day, and we'll give you more information as small group leaders as we get closer because you're never going to remember all this. We're asking you to fast that day from your meals. If you're physically able, I don't know if you've seen some of the conversation we've had online, some of our folks who have diabetes and so forth are concerned about the ability to fast. If you have any type of physical uh, limitation that prevents you from fasting, do not fast food. There are other things that you can fast other than food, whether it's television or video games or something like that. But if you're able to fast food, if you're able to fast your food, uh, what you can do on that day Take one of your meals that you would have eaten or maybe eaten out or whatever and bring that money and we're going to give that away to our food shelf. And that's what we're going to do. And if you'd rather, we can also give that away to the food shelf in Greensburg for those participating there. But we're going to gather in some money and we want to give a nice gift to our food shelf locally and just as, a, as a, an additional way to really connect the folks in these small groups of ministry. The last thing, if the people in your small group are ready for it, if they've never been to church, but you feel like they're ready to be connected to a congregation, uh, the next Sunday is Easter celebration. We are going to have a big celebration of, bam, look at what we've done through our small groups. We're going to celebrate that. It's going to be a part of our Easter celebration. They may be open to coming to the Easter Sunday celebration. We'd love for them to come if uh, they're wanting to come with you here. If they can't, that's fine. You need to play that by ear uh, because, again, we don't want to We want to take people where they're at. You are the minister on those front lines with these folks, so you will have to make that decision. So any questions about the schedule? That's the overarching schedule. Okay. Now, notice right underneath that, what if I can't make everything? What if I can't make all the worship services? You know, again, what am I holding up? HolyTrinityEastPGH.com. We understand that travel schedules, work schedules, keep people from church today and participating in everything. We are trying to make it possible that you can participate in everything at your convenience. If you can't get to worship service, it's okay. We will make sure all the worship services are streaming online and also available to you at our website so that you can look it up at your convenience later. Also understand that I know that many of our small groups are going to be rotating because this is just life today. We have people working all types of crazy hours. Uh, I know in our, our church we got people work every other Sunday or sometimes every Sunday. That's why we have a Tuesday service. Uh, sometimes they, they their schedules are all over the place. We have people working two or three part-time jobs. It's very difficult. So I know that probably half of our small groups will not have a regular day for meeting because it's just impossible. So we understand that here at Holy Trinity. That's why we're making it as easy as we possibly can for you. So don't panic. That's why we've got a website and why we've got our Facebook pages. We'll make sure that you are caught up with everything. Okay, next. So where, where do we have to go again? It's HolyTrinityEastPGH.com. Everything will be there for you. Okay, so let's get into some philosophy here. Why small groups? Why is this a big campaign? One of the things we've noticed as a congregation, first of all, whenever we emphasize small groups, we get a, certainly, this is not why we do it, but we do get a, a, a significant boost in worship attendance and in and participation in the congregation. That's not why we do it, but I think it's indicative of people's faith. It really is a key in helping grow people's faith. And so I think that's oftentimes why we see that as a result afterwards. But I believe that small groups are a biblical model of how the church operated all the way back in the first century AD. If you notice that when, when uh, Christians would gather together, they didn't have church buildings. They would go to, the, especially when the Jews were first of all the very first Christians, they would certainly do their cultic worship, and I don't mean that cultic. I mean that as a, as a uh, theological term, not as a uh, critical term. In other words, when I use cultic, I'm saying uh, we have cultic worship in the Christian church. It's, it's unique to our particular brand. 
the Jews have cultic worship, the, the, the Muslims have their own cultic worship. So it's a scholarly term I'm using, not a critical term of a particular uh, uh, group of Christian, or Jews or Christians or whatever. But the Jews had their particular cultic style of worship. They would worship on the Sabbath day, which would be Friday night to Saturday early evening. So they would worship sometime in that time frame. The early Christians who were Jews would worship in the Jewish synagogue. But then they would get together for their own particular brand of Christian worship. They would do that on Sunday. Now you know why we worship on Sundays. It's the day of the Lord's resurrection. It's the Lord's day. And so they would gather together in people's homes as small groups. They would be family groups and friend groups. They'd have anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 people in them. And that was it. So we find that the early Christians participated in small groups, and it's a very effective way to grow people's relationship with God. Why? Look at the second bullet point. It's effective because 85% of the people who come to relationship with Christ and ultimately come to a church do so because of an invitation from the pastor? Oh no. From a lay person. In fact, statistics tell us that only 2-3% to ever come to a church or come to a relationship with Christ because of an invitation of the pastor. Wow. Pastors are really ineffective doing this. And there's a reason for that. Because people are cynical about pastors at worst. And at best, it's just, well, that's the pastor's job. He should be doing that or she should be doing that. So when a lay person who's not getting paid to tell you about the love that they have for Christ tells you about their love for Jesus, that has a tremendous more credibility than any pastor standing up there and preaching a sermon. It's why you are much more effective witness to Christ than I will ever be as a pastor. And that's why I think it's so effective. The small group model is so effective. And also look at the last bullet point. It's non-threatening. We live in a day and an age where people are very cynical and frightened by congregations. And I'm telling you as a pastor, I, uh, when we go on vacation, we don't often, on occasion we've been out to worship on Sundays when we go out as a family. But I think most vacations we don't. And I'll tell you, because it, it's really intimidating going to a different congregation. You just don't know what you're to expect. And it, it's terrifying. And I say that as a pastor, you don't know what you're going to expect. Um, so people are really frightened. And that's why you as a lay person that's connected to a place are much more effective because then they know they're with somebody who they trust and care for. But also, even those of us who've been involved in churches have been really hurt by churches at some point. I can ask a question, how many have been hurt by church? I guarantee everybody sitting at this table will raise their hands. Am I right? Everybody. At some point, we've all been hurt by people in the congregations, and we become very cynical of congregations, and I understand that. We do not want church buildings and places and pastors to be a stumbling block from people having their lives transformed by the good news of Christ. And that's why in this day and age, you are so critical to the life of the church and the presentation of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, I ask you, please keep that in mind. That's why small groups are so important. So what is your purpose? You're a small group leader. What is your purpose? Uh, and your purpose as a small group leader. The number one thing, the first bullet point, to deepen your relationship with Christ by connecting you to other people. Notice I didn't say Bible study. Most people think small groups, the main purpose of the small group is Bible study. Believe it or not, Bible study is a secondary purpose. We do want you to get into Bible study because Jesus is the reason that's supposed to bring us together. But living out the life of the church is best lived in community, and that's going to be reflected in our campaign uh, with these small groups here. I believe that the most important reason for connecting with a small group is the relationship that you have with other people. And that ultimately nourishes your relationship with Christ. So that is the purpose of the small group. To find fellowship and support. To give the gift of Jesus Christ to others. And notice only lastly, to connect people to Christ's church. Well, you kind of are connected to Christ's church when you're connected to a small group. But I guess I'm using the word church in that case in terms of the larger structure. The institutional church that we're thinking of. But uh, that, that is a, a secondary purpose, and that's way down the road, because I'm not as concerned about the structural 
institutional church as I am, the church is represented in your small groups. You are the church when you're doing your small group. Do you get that? When you gather together with a handful of people in your home, that is the church. It's not this building here at Holy Trinity. It's you when you gather together with two or more Christians. Isn't that what the Bible says? Where two or more gather in my name, there I am with you, Jesus promises. That is church. That should be a big help to people who maybe have social anxieties. I tell you, on our online, I know for a fact because I've communicated to some of the people who are watching and streaming our services online, I would, we get anywhere from five to ten people <laughs> families watching online. About five or six of those families that watch have outright told me that the reason why they stream our service online is they have some sort of social anxiety and they just don't like being in groups of people. It's very hard for them. Well, I'm glad we can be of help. And that's one of the things I think small groups deal with, that issue, that people who have social anxieties have a hard time being in small or big groups of people and people they don't know, at least in a home. They know the people, they're surrounded in a comfortable environment, and they know the people they're going to be surrounded with, and they can trust that environment. And it's also going to help people who are, again, cynical about churches, who've been hurt by churches. They can do church in your home. I think that's an awesome thing. So who are you going to invite to these small groups? Some of you, Jen, I know you already have a small group that's going, and you've got a connection with people. Uh, some of these small groups are brand new. Yeah, way to go. You've got a thumb up. Um, some others of our groups, this is brand new for you. You do not have a small group as of yet. And, you're, and I know some of our folks are saying, who am I going to ask to a small group? Well, you can throw a rock and hit 20 people, you know, as long as it bounces and skips like it does when you throw it off uh, water. Bam, 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 it's going to skip over. You know, you, you're going to hit 10 people and, and 8 of them are going to be people that are eligible to invite to your small group. Because... Right now, only 13% of Americans on any given Sunday worship in a place, in a, in a church. Only 18 to 20% of Americans regularly are involved in a congregation. So we know that not everybody is able to worship on any given Sunday, but less than 20% of Americans actually regularly worship, means they worship at least once a month. That's it. So that means 8 out of 10 people that you come across on any uh, on every, every day is a mission opportunity for you. Uh, chances are your next door neighbors don't, are not connected anyway. Doesn't mean they don't believe in God, but they just are not connected with anybody else. They have no way to nurture their relationship with God. Your co-workers, your family members, again, some families, either they're, many, most people are churched or, and many are not, but in a lot of cases, most of our families can look at our, our family members and say, boy, I've got a lot of family members that aren't connected anywhere. So it is not hard to find people who are disconnected, but what you need to find are the people that you have a relationship with. That's who God expects you to grab. Not people you don't have relationships with, people you have relationships with already, who may be hungry to hear about God, family, friends, next door neighbors, People you say hi to in the morning when you go out and you take your trash out and you see and you talk uh, kind of to uh, over the fence on occasion, they might be appropriate people to ask, hey, listen, I'm doing a small group in my home. Do you want to come? They're probably very receptive to that because most people are still very hungry to know that there's a God that loves them. They're just not going to churches to find out about it for one reason or another. People in transitions. Maybe you have somebody brand new who's moved into your neighborhood. Ask them. Take them over a plate of cookies. Say, hey, look, you know what? We have a small group in my home. You want to come over. You're new to the neighborhood. It's an opportunity for you to meet some people and make some friends. They're hungry to make friendships. Uh, people who've lost loved ones. People who maybe have not uh, been open to this before. When they're in transition, they've lost a loved one, a spouse, uh, a son, a daughter, a grandparent, or, or a friend. That's, they're hungry for something. It's a good opportunity to say, hey, listen, we can, why don't you come over and we'll pray for you. Would you be willing to come over and we'll pray for you? You'd be surprised at how many people would be open to that invitation. People have gone through significant hospitalization. Go visit them in the hospital. Invite them to come. Listen, we're praying for you in our small group. Would you be open to coming so we can pray over you and, and just pray for you? I guarantee you, you know, 8 out of 10 of them would be very open to that. Some would not be. But many are really hungry here that 
there's a God that loves them. These are opportunities for you to do that. But notice my bottom bullet point, and this is really important. It is a big warning. Remember that your primary purpose is to connect these people to a fellowship of people who care for them, connect them ultimately to Jesus Christ, but they are not to be just another potential mark or notch on your belt of, ooh, look what I've done. Okay? This is really a, a major concern. They can never feel as though you're just trying to get them because it's another mark and notch on your belt. You have to do it because you genuinely care for this person. I hope that makes some sense. I really want to stress that. People sniff it out when they feel like they're being used and manipulated for your own purposes. You have to invite them for one reason only, because you actually genuinely care for them, and you feel like you've got something significant to offer them. I want to just pause there for a minute, because I think this is the most important thing I've said today. Is there any questions about that or comment about that? Okay, I'm looking to see. Let me just check to see, too, if we've got anything online. doesn't look like it yet. I've got a couple of likes for our small group conversations. Again, if you want to participate online and you're watching live, we have on both of our Facebook pages, whether you're connected to Revolution or to Holy Trinity, I have just posted something a little bit about small group questions here. If you have any questions as we're doing this presentation today, please post something to, the, uh, uh, to one of those, one of those uh, topics and I will hopefully see that and be able to respond to that. Even if you post afterwards, even if it's a day or two afterwards, I'll keep looking at any updates or questions on that and answer any questions you might have in case you've missed some of that. Okay, let's go on. We're almost done with part one, and then we'll figure out whether we're going to go straight into part two or whether we need a short break. How do you invite somebody small group? Okay, so you have somebody who's been in the hospital, who's a next-door neighbor or family member. You visit with them. Um, I think the best way to do that, you visit with them in the hospital, you pray for them, and at some point when they're ready, you know, maybe they're in the hospital, you pray for them, just go over and say, hey, look, I just want to pray for you, God bless you, bring you healing. When they're done, you follow up with a phone call and say, hey, listen, you know what, uh, I know you've gone through a, a difficult turmoil recently. You know, I have, a, I have a small group in my home, we meet, we pray, we support each other. Would you be willing to come out? We, we could pray for you. So that's a very simple way to do that. It's a non-threatening way to do that. Same thing, death of a loved one. You go, you show up to the funeral for that, that person. You care for them. Obviously, you don't do it at the funeral. You follow up, you bring them, a, you bring them something to eat. You, you care for them, you love them. When they are ready, it might be a week or two down the road, say, hey, look, we've been praying for you in my small group. Uh, we'd like to support you. Can you. Do you want to come out and we can pray for you and again... Um, you know, just uh, it, it's just an opportunity for us to support each other, to love each other, and just to know, just to find out that, you know, just to remind each other that God cares for you. And again, a lot of people would be very, very open to that. For other folks who are not going through times of transition, um, it's just that simple invitation. It's your next door neighbor, somebody you've been talking to as you've been throwing the garbage out every day. You know, just say, hey, listen, uh, you know, I see here every day. We don't know each other very well. Uh, I just have a small group where we, you know, we just have a small group of friends that get together every Thursday night, and uh, we talk and we have some fun. We pray together. We support each other. If if that's of interest to you, I'd love to have you come because we'd like to get to know you a little bit better. You see, that's kind of what, what's called a soft sell. You know, in other words, you're not you're not pushing anything down them. You're offering the invitation. You've got something really exciting. There's no, uh, they don't feel like they're being asked to come to a church where they're going to be asked for money. They're coming to your home. Remember, what's the number one selling point of your small group? You are. You are the reason why they're going to come. Not me, not our church, not our programs, not this campaign. They're connected to you. You are the one that's leading them in. I hope that's never lost. So I hope you don't go and lead with, oh, my pastor's got something really cool. They don't care about me. They don't know me. Oh, my church's got something cool. You know, they don't care about this church. That's going to be turned off right away to 80% of the people in this country. They don't care about congregations. They don't care about your pastor. They don't care about this campaign. They care about you. You are the number one selling point. 
You're the reason why they're going to come. You are the one that's going to be their pastor. You're the one that's going to be their minister. So don't ever forget that. Don't ever lead with, oh, I got a cool program. They don't care. Oh, I would love to get to know you better. Then they care. Then you've got them. Oh, I want to get to know you better. Now you've got a nice hook to be able to sell them yourself and ultimately share with them Christ. Okay. Um, I hope I presented that well. Any questions about that? Because that's really important. Okay, the last thing in part one. Do we need to invite people to Holy Trinity? I think I've said this a couple of times. I'm going to make this again. Making members out of your small group members is not a primary goal of this campaign. I'm not going to lie. There's a secondary goal where, yes, if there's somebody who's appropriate and hungry and looking for a church and we can connect them here and this is the appropriate church for them, yes, absolutely. But that is not our primary purpose here. Nobody, we don't want anybody to feel like they're being used. You are the missionary on the front line. You are the one that needs to make that decision. So you get a group of five, six people in your small group. And uh, one of them might be hungry. You have uh, for learning more about God, as I indicated to you earlier. And there might be an appropriate time to invite them. Now, I'll tell you, in my small group, I know for a fact I have a guy who will... I think I can get into the fellowship hall. We brought him into the fellowship hall. After 20 years of working with him, he's finally made it into the fellowship hall. He will never step upstairs into the, in the worship space because he thinks God is out to get him. Okay? He just will not do that. But we've got him connected. Okay? I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to invite this guy to worship. It just might not happen. I just have, But I've got him connected to a small group of Christians. And that's good. So at least he's being supported in his faith. You have to use and evaluate that. If they're hungry, you'll know. If you have any questions about that and you're not sure whether or not it's appropriate to ask them, please call me. That's what I'm here to be here for. I'm here to be your pastor so that you can be a better pastor in your small group. But I would say my gut reaction is, is that if you have six to seven people and none of them are connected to a church, one of them at the end of this might feel like they're hungry for something more and need that connection. And this may be the place for them. It may not be. You're going to know that. Because our congregation is not the be-all, end-all of churches. I've said that to our own people. We've got a nice little church. We've got some great people. I like the people we have in our congregation. I think, I, I do. But there's a lot of great churches out there. And we want what's best and what's in the best interest of the people in your small group. What's not, not what's in our best interest, okay? Um, so we'll just, you've got to play that one by ear. So again, if they're ready, and they're ready to be connected to a place, and this is the appropriate place, I will help you with that. That's my job as your pastor. But you need to make that evaluation as pastor of these people. Okay, any uh, questions? That's kind of, that outlines the philosophy of small groups of what we're trying to do, and uh, part two is all about the specifics of how you lead a small group, but I think we just need to stop real quick and see if there are any questions. I'm going to look at both our Facebook pages, make sure that there's not any questions. I have, I have a like. Somebody's obviously liked one of my comments about small groups here. It's been seen by a couple other folks, but let me ask you folks that are sitting here today, is there anything I've not done sufficiently, any questions you might have, anything I've not been clear about? Two likes. Thank you. But no comments yet. No questions. we got a quiet group. Okay, so here's my question. We've, got, uh, we've been going at it for about 40 minutes. Do you need a break to go to the bathroom for five minutes and grab something else to drink? Why don't we do a five-minute break and uh, we'll come back. I think we can get through the next part in about 15 to 20 minutes. How's that sound? Everybody good with that? Yeah. Awesome. So Terry, maybe you can turn on some music and blast it so the people online are not wondering what's going on. We'll put a five-minute break, and we'll see you guys back.